This is part two of a two-part podcast. Uh, because it was split in the middle uh, from a longer recording, there's no introduction at the beginning. So it's the continuation of the interview with Venom Fang X, the infamous uh, YouTube vlogger, I believe is the word. Uh, if you haven't listened to part one, go back and do so, because most of part two won't make any sense unless you do. Okay, enjoy. In the beginning, man created God and saw that it was profitable. Okay. There are numerous examples um, of people who've followed your particular um, YouTube channel and the way that you, the way that you do things okay. who've turned out to be deeply unpleasant people. Um, Such as? I mean, uh, Anthony Powell more murdered like murdered Asian McGowan. Okay, yeah, and that's fair to bring up. Uh, so the first question is this. I, I didn't know the kid. Uh, or I don't. I, I never talked to him. He may have sent me a message, but I've gotten so many messages. So I can't be responsible for the people who watch my videos. I mean, you've talked to me. If you go and kill someone after this conversation, I'm not responsible for what you do. Fair? Right. I mean, but you did post on the 14th of April 2009 a video saying Anthony Powell R.I.P., uh, in which you didn't actually mention the name of uh, the girl. Going. That he that he First killed. Lot. Mentioned his name, right. but you didn't he mention murdered, hers. He murdered her specifically because she was an atheist. Okay, and that has nothing to whatever to do with me. But it has everything to do with with the peddling of these beliefs. If people have told Not these things are true, yeah. if he didn't believe those things, he wouldn't have killed an atheist. He wouldn't have picked somebody who was an atheist. He may have gone and killed somebody else. I could make the somebody. same argument by saying that if he actually believed what the Bible teaches, and it clearly teaches not to do stuff like that. We're not that, talking I mean, about the Bible anymore. We're talking about the, the repercussions of your actions. No, we're not talking about my actions. I'm not responsible for what he does. I'm nor am I responsible for what you do. No. Well, okay, well, let's I'm move not. on to... I mean, Frankly, well, I'm not. No, hold on. Let's not move on, because you're trying to accuse either me, which I don't know how you could do that, or you're trying to accuse the Bi or, or Christianity as a whole. So, so first see, decide which one you're accusing. You see, you, you might be perfectly capable of um, seeing things um, in a kind of a, a measured kind of a way. You can, you can make an adjudication about the difference between your beliefs and, and your actions. But people well, what who happens are on, if I turn around and use no, the same me, argument and say that an atheist people went people who are unhinged will, People who are unhinged have watched your exactly. videos, and they're exactly. incapable of making the differentiation between them. Right. And you have to be very careful what you say to these kinds of people, because you're dealing with subjects that touch a raw nerve with people who have a sociopathic tendency. And okay, I but my, I can't my be worry responsible about the sort for what a sociopath does. No. No, no, we're not, not saying you're responsible for his actions. We're saying that you have to be careful what you say to these people. When you give them a justification to believe in things that aren't true, you give them a justification to go out and do things which are abhorrent. You've got to be very okay, careful. Well, and that opens up a whole other can of worms. Why is what he did abhorrent? Why, why is murdering someone because they're an atheist abhorrent? No, why murder itself. Why is, why, uh, obviously, I assume you think murdering is something we should not do. Well, here's a question. You tell us why it's abhorrent, Sean. Because I believe life is sacred, and thou shall not kill is a moral commandment from God. Okay, so if it weren't for that commandment, would you still go out and kill people? Uh, yeah, that's irrelevant. I, I don't you suppose see, this that is the thing. This is the thing not irrelevant. It's absolutely relevant. You, you wouldn't, if you'd never been exposed to any Christian teachings at all, you would still know that, that murder is wrong. Which, again, this goes back to uh, what we talked about right when we started, about does the atheist know that God exists? I, I would suggest that that would be one of those reasons uh, as no, to but an indicator. But there's a solid evolutionary reason as to why we have developed that. Morals and ethics. And yeah. The, these are but the, the by, saying solidarity. That, by saying that morality is merely an evolution, uh, by giving it an evolutionary uh, or materialistic explanation, mm -hmm. you actually render it arbitrary. Uh, I don't follow that at all. Explain. Sure. How, how uh, is it arbitrary? Yeah. There, there are, in my estimation, there are three criteria to, to make any kind of uh, either moral or, or truth statement uh, anything but arbitrary, to make it factual. Uh, it has to be universal, it has to be unchanging, and it has to be immaterial. And if it no, not at all. Those no, not at all. It's not black and white at all like that. 
See, the, okay. the only reason you know so it's you wrong to murder is because of your evolutionary heritage, and we can prove that that's a fact. You but said that, that the reason why we know it's wrong to murder is because we're somehow imbued with special gifts from a particular god from a particular religion. No, what I'm saying is there is no, there's no way in an evolutionary paradigm to say that anything is right or wrong because everything is just matter in motion, and you can't apply uh, objective moral ver uh, values upon a material interaction. It's no, just, but we can. It, because we've evolved, but we've evolved them, so we can. The fact that we can do it without the intercession of some supreme supernatural being actually I'm saying speaks you can't make it objective. Yeah, uh, but you, you can say, yes, I've evolved to think that okay. it's wrong, but that doesn't sure. make it actually wrong. Okay, Sean, it is objectively true that if you kill other members of your social group, your social group has then less chance of surviving. That no is an question. objective truth. So, no so you agree. So that's, that's where the origins of, of these things come from, that as a species that lives in groups... Uh, first we, of all, you just made a logical jump. Just because you can explain it with a nice story doesn't mean that that's the way it happened. No, but you just agreed It's not just a nice story. It's 150 million years' worth of evidence. I don't accept that. Uh, well, hold on, 150 million... Can you tell me uh, of a single 150 million-year-old evidence of the evolution of morality? Just give me one. Uh, yes, the um, studies of Dr. Richard Leakey. Be more specific, please. Uh, he's an expert on um, Homo ergaster. Okay. Continue. Which is probably one of our nearest common ancestors that lived in social groups. Right. So what in his study did he find that was 150 million years old that somehow justified this view of morality? Oh, well, the fossil beds that, that, that these samples okay, have been so found Okay, so you're telling in. me you looked at a fossil and found something to do with morality? Yeah, because they used to build fires, they used to live in social groups, they used to take care of one another's young, because the thing about it was that they were, they were born with soft skulls. So yeah. the, 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 the youth, of the, the young, were incapable of going out and um, sort of clinging onto their mothers while their mothers were hunting. The mother had to hold onto them by the fireside and be looked after by other members of the social group. She couldn't take care of herself and her young at the same time. Okay, so well, I mean, kangaroos take care of their young in the pouch and whatnot, so I'm willing to even grant you, let's just go along with that for now. I'll grant you that. So I don't aside from the fact I gave you a tacit example of something that you said I couldn't give you an oh. example of, we'll move on. Well, I think just showing that someone takes care of their young or builds fire or whatever, that doesn't itself entail morality any more than looking no, at no, no, no. social behaviors it, de in it demonstrates the origin kingdom. of group reciprocity and altruism that's what it does and but we see is, that in the animal kingdom yeah, uh, yes we do Sean and that's the point we see that in the yeah, animal that kingdom yeah that is the point, because, yeah, the point is, the, the, no let me finish Sean the reason why we see that in the animal kingdom is because it's clearly an evolved trait those animals aren't learning altruism and group responsibility from their god and They're, they certainly didn't read the bible exactly no, they. But how did they survive before they evolved these uh, social? They didn't. They're extinct. Survival. The ones that didn't didn't survive. So everything died until it evolved the ability to socialize. No, the ones that were able to success. The ones that led groups. to humans. Yes, the evolutionary branch that led to humans. Yes. That's very convenient. But I, I'll grant you that. I, I don't care. I, that's. I mean, I don't believe it. But if we want to go along with that, that's fine. That well, still doesn't give doesn't us. Matter if you don't believe it, it's still true. I could say the same thing. So. No, but, but, but about what? Around. That's fine. Let's Give go. Give an example. Now you're saying you could you, you could say the same thing about something being true. Give me an, an example of something you hold to be true that science does not. Uh, Christianity is true. That's not an individual, not a specific thing. I'm looking for a specific thing that can be tested against the reality we live in, something like the flood or creation. Give me an example of something that you hold to be a fact that is actually not factually true when it comes to science. I would say evolution is precisely that. So you're saying you do believe in evolution, but you think it's not factually true, would, or are you I saying? Never said no, that. I'm asking you for something that you believe to be true, uh -huh. that science doesn't agree with. Well, I, I've given you a few. Uh, I'm, I, maybe tell me why you're asking, and I could help you. Well, I think it's important because I mean you're saying that uh, we can supply you with all the evidence in the world, and you'll just say you don't believe it. You don't. You'll say no. You don't it's because it's true. I have a way of interpreting that evidence without a bias, <coughs> or at least without your bias. But you have a bias. Oh, I, I, I fully admit I have a bias. My bias is the Christian worldview. Yeah, I mean, and that's a whopping bias. I mean, that bias actually blinds you to the facts. I would say the other way around, because... No, it doesn't, because no, but the thing is, you, you're, you're making it again the, the mistake that creationists and other believers make over and over again. You assume that everybody else works the same way as you guys do. That's right. You assume that we have a preconceived notion, and then we go looking for evidence to fit that notion. That's not how it works. No, but that's yes, not... It no, we don't. That's not how it works, John. That's no, you not don't think you do. 
I know you don't think that. That's precisely why you're, I mean, you have to be on the outside to see you doing it. Really? I think really? so, yes. Really, Sean? Really, really. You think that, you un you honestly think that scientists go into various areas of research with everyone, a Everyone has a worldview. Listen, everyone has a worldview. Everyone has a way of thinking, and everyone approaches any discipline with their preconceived okay, notion. Sure. Everyone does Which that. is precisely what the scientific method is geared towards cancelling out. That's why it's called the scientific method, not the wish-thinking method. And, and uh, listen, I am a total pro-scientific method dude. But you're not. Is, uh, I am. I am. You're not. You put creationist videos on YouTube. Yes, and I believe that they're a proper application of the scientific method, testing, repeating, and observing. We've already spoken about the Grand Canyon that completely contradicts you. And, and you I said that that was laid down during. You're saying that that was laid down during a year that the flood was. Uh, ongoing. No, yes. I, I said, okay, again, without getting down into the specifics, the point of the matter is this, specifically evolution, we can talk about the canyon again if you'd like, but specifically with evolution, in every case, uh, I disagree with the way the dating methods are interpreted because I don't think, I, I think there's a, being a mix, uh, a mix between observational science and historical science. I, I don't see them as the same thing, and I see the dating methods are all based on observational science as opposed to historical science. And uh, we can get into this, but none of this is relevant, again, because now we're, we're getting bogged down in, in evidence again, when it's the foundations of our worldview and, and how we ascertain ultimate reality, which... Well, no, no, it isn't, it isn't at all. You, you, can, uh, you can observe how long it takes for um, a, a piece of material to decay at a radioactive level, at a fundamental level. You can say I that, therefore, that. the half-life of a particular rock strata is X, and you can compare the fossils that are found in that rock strata and say, well, if these fossils are found in that particular section of rock and we know that the half-life of the atoms that make up this rock are so and so forth, therefore these fossils will lay down in that fossil bed at this particular time. And Th if there's you nothing want arbitrary about response, radiometric dating. There is, there's a few, actually 12, assumptions that are going on there, which each can be systematically shown to be, uh, well, they would just be lethal to, to trusting them. You, you can't trust well, them. Give us one. No, oh, simply, I mean, when if you take the biblical model of how the world no, was No, let's created, take the scientific model, which you purport to use. Right. Well, hold on. Science alone does not exclude the possibility of six-day creationism. Okay, well, give, give us a, a scientific model that... that well, science, again, just deals with things we can test, repeat, and observe. So if we begin with a literal 6,000-year-old Earth created... No, you said you wanted ago. to start with a scientific model. Let's yeah. not start well, with the creationist me. model. Let's start with well, the scientific model. I believe model. the creation model is scientific, so again, who are you asking? You're wrong. Prove me wrong. I know wrong. you believe I'm wrong, but so if prove you me wrong. me... Give me evidence grant... to prove that I'm wrong. Well, I, I, I can give you a scenario in which, which is completely compatible with science in which you would be wrong. So if you would let me just get a few words out. All right. When, when God made the world according to the Bible... So there you go. Your first word was God. How can, how can that be scientifically objective when you've used theological thinking in order to get there? You're not because using science scientific doesn't exclude, proof. Again, science does not exclude the possibility. So if you would grant me my, my framework, I've granted you yours, I've said that a few times, grant me mine, and if mine does not contradict anything in reality, then you at least need to be open to it as a okay. possibility. If it doesn't contradict anything in reality, go ahead. Right. Okay. So if we grant that God created the earth, like he said he did, 6,000 years ago, in six right. days... I have to stop you there. That contradicts right. reality. Bristle cone pines, the minimum age of the earth is 8,000 years by tree rings in California. European oaks, the minimum age of the earth is 10,434 years by annual tree rings in Europe. German pine, the minimum age of the earth is 12,405 years. May I get a few words in? No, but you, you said that, you know, we would go you on... Said we you could said we could stop you as soon as you said something that wasn't scientifically valid, yeah. and you said something immediately that wasn't Okay, well, let me, let me show you why it's not scientifically invalid. When okay. God made Adam, Adam was a full-grown adult. Let me he stop you one there. <laughs> let me stop okay. you there. <laughs> because um, um, the, the evolutionary record, which has a very nice, quite a complex and quite neatly uh, complete record of our uh, human evolution, completely contradicts that. So, again, that's on the second one. We've had to stop you a few seconds in. So, again, we'll let you continue. As soon as you say something that's not held up and not, that's contradicted by reality, again, I will stop you, Sean. Go ahead. Okay. So, if we grant that God created the earth and all of its life forms with a granted maturity from the beginning... If we grant that things were yeah, started we grant, supernatural causation, go ahead. Sure, yeah. If we grant that, and we recognize that he has given maturity 
to all of creation and all life forms than when you have the bristlecone pine or, or all these things that appear to be older than they actually are. That is compatible with the view that everything was created with maturity to begin with. And Let me stop you there, Sean. From a biblical sure. point of view, your God says that he doesn't lie. So he's actually lying if he's making the earth look older than it is because he's deliberately misleading us into thinking that things that have happened haven't happened. That things that okay, haven't I'm going to ask haven't. you to, hold on, I'd like to press you on that point. So if God, makes, if God makes a mature man, if God mm-hmm. makes a man fully grown, so he's not gone through the process of growing up into an adult, he makes it as an adult, mm-hmm. and then he tells us that he did it that way, can you tell me how he's lying? If he's created the earth to make it look very, very old, then he yes. is lying because he's deliberately misleading people into thinking that it's old. Why would it not serve well, hold his purpose? On, hold on. No, no, let me stop you there. How, uh, that does not follow. That okay. certainly does not follow. What purpose would it serve a god to mislead people into thinking the earth is old? Why would he need to create the earth with an appearance of age? Uh, I can answer that very simply. I would like god, you to. God created everything complete, as in mature, finished, but done. Complete compared with what, Sean? Okay, uh, compared with an incomplete, I mean, a, a but, but full the thing grown... is, if, if, it's, yes. if it's the fresh, brand new creation, then nobody existing in that creation has anything to compare it against. They can't go, oh, that looks a bit weird because it's new looking and it should look old. That, whatever he created, would have been, in your words, complete looking. So there's no reason to make things look old because it serves well, no hold, purpose. If, if, if Adam was, I, I assume, maybe 18 or older looking, it says he was a man. So if he was created as a man, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll use the word uh, complete or finished or whatever, whatever word you want to use, that state of man was also the state of the entire creation. So whatever complete or finished means it, or mature – Whatever that means is comparable between the, the adult stage of an adult male as a, and to the, to the rest of the universe. It was, but why? It was because God doesn't do anything without completion. It, okay. it's not but, the, but the thing is, though, what I'm trying to push you at here, Sean, is that you're saying that completion, but you're defining completion by what we accept things that are old to look like. Now, I've had this discussion with other people online, and I actually had a creationist say to me that God created things that, to look old because he knew that in the future, when we looked at these things, we would find things that were old. Uh, that and doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's circular. He said that basically things had to look old because God knew that when we looked into the past and looked, dug things up, we would find old things, and he had to make sure that old things were there for us to find because he knew that we would find old things. Now, the thing no, that doesn't make that, any sense. No, I it doesn't, say, and I agree. I agree it makes but, no but sense. That's, but I've had but a that's not my position. No, I've never heard a creationist say that. I would I have, never say that. I have heard a creationist say that to me, and it was a, quite hilarious. Uh, but the that's thing is, I'm pushing you. I've heard Ken Ham say that. I think maybe you're you're I, I, I don't un, I don't even understand what's being said. Uh, my understanding is this: God created the world with maturity, which explains all the signs of maturity, but which make which why? if you inter- does oh, a tree I, I, need to be does a tree need to show annual growth rings to be a functioning tree? Certainly not. Does certainly a not. glacier need to have artificially created layers of ice in it to be a functioning glacier? Certainly not. Now, the argument follows that they, the creationists say that Adam had to be a fully functioning adult to be a fully functioning adult. I will well, grant that you that. that makes sense to me. Yes, yes, I will grant you that because he needed to be a fully functioning adult because we know that to, to be able to do certain things, you need to be a fully functioning adult. However, it does not follow that, that rocks, that riverbeds, that ice flows, uh, that starlight had to follow the same thing. Basically, when you're looking into the night sky, Sean, you're looking back in time, and you're looking back further than you say the universe has existed. Now, there's two things that have happened in that case. Either God has... Well, I think uh, you've made an assumption. Well, either God has jimmied with the speed of light and has changed things. Now, we have evidence that that's not the case. Or... Uh, actually, God has, we don't, but go ahead. Well, actually, we do, and I'll bring it up in a moment. But uh, the thing that we do have is that... Uh, oh, I've lost my train of thought. What was I going to say? <clears throat> oh, man. I hate it when that happens. Uh... <laughs> What was I going to say? The, uh, You're talking the, about starlight. The starlight, yes. Yeah. So it's either, you've either got tired light, in which case God is lying to you by giving an impression of a universe that wasn't actually ever there. So if you see the results of a supernova that's more than 6,000 year, light years away, then that supernova never existed. That explosion never happened. And the light is just there because God thought it was a good idea to put it there. Now, that doesn't Have you make heard, sense. Uh, uh, Humphreys, Dr. Humphreys' explanation of starlight in a young earth. I actually have it on my YouTube channel. 
Oh, is he the white hole cosmologist? Yes. Yeah, there's absolutely no evidence that supports that. Well, again, there's, there's no quote-unquote evidence that Adam was made as a, a full-grown adult. We've never found his, his, his okay. bones. I'm glad you... But, uh, but if, if we did, how would you average... age them? Sorry? If we did find Adam's bones, how would you know how old they were? I don't imagine we could. We wouldn't use radiometric dating at all. Well, I'm saying that the assumptions... I mean, we haven't even gotten to the other assumptions. The, the first assumption of radiometric dating is, of course, the uniformity of nature and the fact that the Earth is not 6,000 years old. You first have to assume that before you can discredit it. And well, you don't assume it, you prove it. I, I don't think you can, is what I'm saying. I think we just did. No, you didn't. You're, you're assuming, again, that the uniformity of nature, that the, you, you first have to assume the Earth was not created with maturity 6,000 years ago in order to, to then posit that things can be older than that. Okay, well, let me give why, you... Why do you think people would do that? Why do, you, why do you think the scientific establishment is entirely geared towards denying what you say is self-evident? Uh, again, I, I, think this, I think maybe there's a few answers to that. Number one, there's a long-running history behind... You're standing on the backs of giants again, Darwin and, and Lyle and, and all them. So there are people who have come before you who have followed the same vein and you've followed in, in their footsteps. So, that, that's so, one it's a, so it's a grand conspiracy to undermine Christianity. Uh, I wouldn't say it's conscious on, on perhaps your level. Right, okay. I've got something to show you, Sean. Sure. Uh, you're saying that we have no evidence that the speed of light has always been the same or as far back as we can see. Now, there's a supernova with the catalogue number no, S. Hold on, I never said that the speed of light isn't... Uh, first okay. of all, I think there, they, Harvard has done studies and shown that the speed of light is not necessarily a constant. The speed of light I, in a I, vacuum is. I, I'd be willing to grant you uh, the speed of light could still be a constant, and yet young Earth creationism could be true. So, but again, I, I just feel like we've been, we've been talking about this and we've been going in circles for a while now because, again, you have a certain predisposition or presupposition regarding... Based upon logic, evidence, and fact. And logic, evidence, and fact based on? Based on our, our observation of reality. Okay, and so uh, why, why is reality that way and could it be otherwise? Well, if it was otherwise, we would observe it to be so. We would adjust our uh, theories and hypotheses accordingly. You said something very interesting in one of your... This is, goes into exactly, exactly this. You said that God... Uh, someone said God is eternal, and you said that... That's illogical. That's, a, that's, a log, that's yeah. exactly what you said. Uh, uh, let me find... You said by nature... Okay, so... You say it's illogical. I almost... I want to find the exact quote, if you could okay. just give me a yeah. second. Okay, by nature they are logical. I'm not sure. Okay, everybody has a starting point, and by nature they are logical. But you are assuming something that is illogical. God is eternal and infinite, always was, and that is illogical. You are assuming, you are assuming something that has no logic. What did you mean by that? I meant that the notion of something that has no beginning and no end is illogical. In the terms of something that's temporal. Well, we're not saying that God's temporal. We're saying he's atemporal. Oh, but you see, this is the thing. You then have to start pushing God out of reality to make him exist. No, you only have to... De if you define reality as that which is temporal, then yes. But I no, define you, reality as that which exists. Yeah, and that which exists. Now, supernatural, by definition, means it's outside of nature. It's outside of the real. It's outside of the natural. Well, hold on. No, no, no. You just, you, just create, no you just commit the fallacy of equivocation. Nature does not necessarily... Is, nature is not exclusive to reality. You, you have to be a naturalist to assume that only nature exists. I'm not willing to grant that. So, could you please cite some evidence that something other than nature exists? Well, no, no, that's not the point. The point yes, is... Yes, it is. No, if you're going to well, make it... No, it's, it's, it's not. Hold on. Just because, let's say I had no evidence that God existed, that does not entail, by logic, that God does not exist. Granted? Right, but... It is a cliche to say it, but absence of evidence does, in some cases, lead to uh, no. But that, of that's, even, that's that's just confusing epistemology, which is how we know things, asking for evidence, and ontology, which is the nature of being. Just because we don't have evidence for God's existence, if we were to grant that, does not mean He doesn't exist. So this is just a confusion. So I want you to make explicit the contradiction between logic and the existence of an eternal being. Can you make that contradiction explicit? The different, the logical. So you, of an I, eternal being. Yes, where does the logic break down? Where do, where do we say okay. that this violates this logical principle? Where does that being come from? 
He's eternal. That is what we're talking about. So are you saying that this being self-created itself? No, because to be created is to have a beginning and violates the nature of being eternal. <laughs> and you can't see the whopping problem in this at all? I, I'm still waiting for the logical contradiction. It's eternal. The, the idea of something being eternal is a logical contradiction in itself. Mm-hmm. Something that has no beginning and no end. Please make explicit the principle of logic that you're using. It's and an inductive and axiom. It, sorry? It's an inductive axiom. You're, you're, you're borrowing from your own conclusion in order to erect the apparent appearance of there being proof. It's a, it's a no, 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 no. circular you, logic. You're saying that that's completely nonsense. You're saying that God's eternal existence violates, by using the word illogical, and maybe you want to change the word, you want to say that there is a contradiction between a logical principle and the existence of an eternal being. Can you make explicit the contradiction? Tell me exactly why this cannot be so. Because the concept is nonsensical. According to, hey, uh, you're just repeating. The, the, only, reason, the, the only reason that you, the you need, the only reason that you need to, to reach into these sort of depths in order to come to some sort of definition of what your God constitutes is because that's the gap that it's been pushed into. You're appealing to the God of the gaps again. Uh, not at all. I'm asking. Yes, you, you are. You're, you're saying that the only the only possible explanation for your God is that He's eternal. And yet, when you're asked to present evidence of it, you say that you don't have to because. No. Now again, you're you're confusing epistemology and ontology again. I'm asking you, you said that there is a logical, by saying something's illogical, you're positing a logical principle that makes something that excludes it from being possible. So I need you to tell me what principle of logic you're using that somehow excludes the possibility of an eternal being. But you need to explain how this eternal being could be in the first place. That you, I mean, you're asking a very, very, very I'm going to take this as an admission of, an admission of no, defeat. Told, on your, you can say you whatever way you want. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, one has nothing to do with the other. But one has literally nothing to do with the other. But, but I mean, you've got no evidence to even prove this being exists, you're so we're just talking around in circles there. No, it's not. You're confusing epistemology, the study of knowledge, with ontology, the nature of being. Tell me how God's ontological being contradicts a principle of logic. We're not talking about well, give me evidence you, for you, his existence. That's well, a we, totally different conversation. You tell us why that is a valid definition of a particular God from your particular religion, and we'll, we'll get to why we're I am, using I am wrong stunned. definitions later. But I first of all, you have to tell us why answer. that is a valid argument for the existence of a particular God. I'm not arguing for the existence of God. You so, made a claim. So you're appealing you to the God of the gaps. No, you made an argument that an eternal being is is illogical, that violates a principle of logic. Now, I am challenging you that there is no such logical principle that could exclude the possibility of an eternal being existing. Okay, well, here's, so a, here's, a, here's, here's a good example. That contradiction. Okay, Sean, it would be impossible to ever reach in a point of eternity. You, you cannot do it. No but, no, but you can't ever reach. Now, we're living in, an, in a universe that is temporal. Yes. Even if I started counting now, I would never reach infinity because there would always be more time. So Absolutely. even if a God has existed into the deep, deep past, there's nothing to say that that God will continue to exist. You have no grounds okay, to believe well, that. And the thing is... You've made another confusion now. If now you've, 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 got you've got all your work ahead of you in convincing us that that's a... You've got all your work ahead of you in convincing us that infinity is, infinity is a valid argument for the existence of your particular God. So well, you've, you've got so many problems. Some of the finest mathemat- mathematicians in the world have driven themselves literally insane trying to prove the existence of God by using infinity. God can't be proved empirically. So oh, let's or factually or in any other way. Well, I think he's necessary to begin to even prove anything. No. You, see, you accuse us of misting, mixing ontological with epistemological definitions, yes. but they're doing exactly the same thing. Not You're saying that you can prove your particular God exists, and the, uh, at saying, the same time as proving that no other God exists. Conversation. I at no point, any, I've never said that I can prove the existence of God. Oh, that's very good of you. Uh, now, I mean, the thing is, your, your God's meant to kind of encourage certain behaviours in in an individual. Uh, Are we changing the subject, by the way? No, no, I'm just asking. You no, no, I think we're, we're we're moving on. Happy that everybody's yeah, made their yeah, point. I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, your God. I'm I mean, not done. I, I've got a few things to point out to you guys. Oh, shoot! Oh, well, then, go on, I'll, then. I'll come back to this. Okay, well, first of all, I, I'm st- I'd really like you guys to maybe write down at, at this point, because I would like an answer. I want to know, because there is no principle of logic that makes the existence of something eternal 
impossible or illogical. It just doesn't exist. Right, but that may well be the case, but what we're saying to you, Sean, is that that is no, you still got all your work ahead of you in showing that that is somehow the valid definition of Yahweh. No, I, I don't. Uh, what, what I can do so you is... you can say that you can't prove that Yahweh exists even with the Bible. Of course not. Of course not. God is not the conclusion. God's the starting point. That's been Which said God? a few times. I've told you. Which, go on, tell us again. Uh, I start with the Christian God. That's where I begin. Thank you. So you are using a circular argument. You're trying to say that... Well, I'm not arguing. I'm not trying to prove that what I'm telling you is true. What I can do... There's, there's, I mean, maybe we should have began this entire conversation by saying, wh what, what am I trying to do by, by talking to you? I'm not trying to prove my position. What I am trying to do is show that back, your position... Back up from the... Sean, Sean, the, bike, the microphone's oh, clipping. Sure. You need to move back a little bit. All right. What I'm trying to do is first show you guys that your position is untenable. It, it's undefendable. Intellectually. But why do you think that? Well, I think you've shown me on a, on a few occasions. A um, slight one. Well, uh, first of all, you can't tell me why my position is illogical. I can tell you that your position is untenable because you're basing it on a book that isn't true. You're basing and it on a, on a way of thinking that actually isn't borne out by the evidence. I said at the very beginning of this podcast that if you're going to argue for the existence of something out there somewhere that we don't yet understand, then that is a definition of God that I will not argue with. What you then did was said that you can prove that God exists. I never said that. You might not have said it in so many words, but you said that by using certain... Um, I can't remember the, the phraseology that you use now, but you, you, you essentially argued for the existence of something out there because it can't be proven not to exist. You did exactly what I said. Uh, no. First You're of all... You're entirely free to do, but you then went on to say that that was therefore proof of their particular God, Yahweh. You said it in the last no. part. No. I'm, I'm, I'm certain that that's not... I think maybe you're just misunderstanding what, I, what I'm doing. I, I certainly didn't say that I can prove my position. No one, listen, listen, no one can reason themselves, and I've definitely said this, no one can reason themselves to the existence of God. So saying, saying it's something that, is, that defies reason. I, I would say it like this, I'm, I'll quote someone, it says this, it says, God is not of this world and hence can never be discovered in the categories and ex of accepted patterns of human reasons. Rather, uh, more rational than reason alone, obedience and faith is in truth the most reasonable of acts. What, uh, what it's saying is this, that faith... By, by beginning with absolute reality, which is God, faith then corrects the integrity of reason and allows us to ascertain and, and correctly interpret reality. Okay. If you don't begin... It allows you to you believe in be things that aren't true. Yeah, exactly. It allows you well, to carry on believing. Grant, hold on. If you grant that what I'm telling you is true, then, then everything I've said make, makes sense. Okay, I want to ask you a question then. Why does your God lie to us about uh, supernova SN1987A? Don't and imagine it's never mentioned from, that one by name. And the distance from the Earth. Why has why has that? Because we know for a fact that that supernova is approximately 168,000 light years away. Now we okay. know this for a fact because we could cross-reference it from when it exploded, the light reached us, and then the light from that explosion reached a circle of gas, a certain distance from it but sort of around it. So we saw that then reach it a couple of months later. Amazing. And we, so it, we can cross-reference one against the other. So we know that 168,000 light years, uh, 168,000 years ago, the speed of light was exactly the same as it is now. So it does slightly scupper your argument that the universe is only 6,000 years old. The only explanation you're left with is saying, because you, that completely undermines anything about the speed of light changing because we know for a fact that it has not in the entire of the last 168,000 years. Sure. Now, the only other option you're left with then is the whole tired light. No, I have another option. But, oh, the white hole cosmology. That one's a pretty good one. Yeah, but it isn't, is it? There's no evidence at all to support it. But if it's true, then it makes sense of the but, phenomenon but, you're describing. But, but, but it isn't true, that's the point. Well, you can't disprove it, can you? You have to prove it to be... That's, that's the way no, it that, works. You have to make... No, I don't, I don't have to. You see, again, this, this comes down to what, what do I have to prove? My position, I'm not trying to prove. What I'm saying is nothing in reality contradicts it. Right, you're saying that... None you, of... you, 
you haven't excluded it from the realm okay. of possibility. Let me read you something about the theory of white hole cosmology. Sure, the theory of white hole cosmology is fatally flawed. The mathematics used by Humphreys are riddled with problems, and special relativity is repeatedly misinterpreted. In several places, the theory is even self-contradictory, most, noted in the, most notably about the cosmological constant lambda. Uh, it says here, the compression and intensification of light. The idea requires that the universe outside the solar system is as old as contemporary scientists hold it to be. They then say that while all this time passed outside the vicinity of the Earth, only six days creation week passed on Earth, the stars outside the dilation field would still be emitting light towards the Earth at the same rate, which would have would have to be compressed into six days, which would cause celestial objects outside the dilation of the field to appear roughly, uh, it's about eight 833 trillion times brighter inside the field, raising the surface temperature of the Earth to hundreds of thousands of kelvins. That's one of the very one of the first points of why it's it contradicts reality. Breaks the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, first of all, I can make sense of the second law of thermodynamics in my worldview. I can understand the uniformity of nature. I, I don't understand but why clearly you, you don't. If you think the white hole cosmology is an argument. I'm also open to alternatives. Oh, so you're saying now that you don't think white hole cosmology is a good argument, now you've heard that it actually denies reality? Well, frankly, I, I don't pretend to be a mathematician, nor do I pretend to be the one who invented the white hole cosmology. So, so you're I'm, now distancing yourself from it. Having second shown, ago, it was a great argument, and yeah. now that we've shown that it isn't, it isn't. I, I, don't, I don't follow. What, give us another example, then. Well, let me at least explain another my position. another explanation. Now that well, we've, we've discounted I don't, I don't, white hole cosmology... Okay. That's fine. I'm not sure if you've discounted it or not, because I don't necessarily understand... I think the discount itself. It breaks the second law of thermodynamics. And is the second... And do you believe the second law of thermodynamics, excuse me, is un unbreakable? I think you would have to have a considerable amount of evidence to prove that it wasn't reliable. Uh, why? Why? Why, yeah. Why would you need a considerable amount of evidence to prove that the second th law of thermodynamics was unreliable? If, that, yeah. if, if you haven't answered your own question with that, then I can't help you. I, I just don't understand why, why you have such trust in the laws of nature, why, why you don't feel like they're, they're flexible or, or, or subject to change. Oh, but you see, if they are flexible and subject to change, then intelligibility is impossible, Sean. Because and then, we, then uniformity will hold. Intelligibility is impossible. No, but it isn't. You see, this is the thing. Because of uniformity holding and because of the primacy of existence and because reality is, to put it bluntly, real, we can experiment on it, we can alter it, and we can experience it, we can do things in it and predict what's going to happen. If, however, your worldview is true and miracles can happen at any moment on the whim of a supernatural being, then intelligibility is impossible because uniformity does not hold. Two scientists could do the same experiment a million times and get the same result. But if they're doing it in a universe where miracles can happen at any moment on the whim of its creator they cannot guarantee that the next time they do it they will get the same result and they Precisely cannot guarantee exactly no, let me finish correct. and they cannot guarantee that any times the times they've done the experiment before it hasn't been altered because of a miracle uniformity is in, uh, intelligibility i'm sorry is impossible in that reality because we cannot know for certain that certain things do certain things in that reality so and it causes I, a lot of problems so i don't know how you get around that well, we get around it a few ways. The first problem is you're assuming you don't live in that reality. Well, you are, are we having this conversation now, or are we all imagining it? Uh, for me, I know we're having it. I don't know how, you, how, do you, how know? you guys know it. How do you know that? Well, I know it because I start again. I mean, if you, I have to give a recount of my entire worldview. I begin with all absolute reality being God, and God has assured me that this is indeed the real world. But and, I start with the you, you, you can't flesh out the, the you can't flesh out a, a definition of what you mean by the word God without using circular logic. Well, hold you on. Just spent the last hour showing that you can't. Well, I, I could. Uh, you, I've never attempted to describe God in this conversation. Not that I remember. You've just attempted to equate it with the only reason you can know that you are definitely having this conversation. You literally said it in your last sentence. And you're the one who said we could be in a matrix or a brain in a vat. No, I never said that at all. I said, how do you know we're not? And I know we're not only because I trust by faith in the God that doesn't lie. You trust by faith. But the thing is, we've just shown to you that if the universe is only 6,000 years old, God has yeah. lied to us by via starlight. Uh, no, he told us that he did it that way. Nobody doesn't say that in the Bible. Yes, he does. 
No, but see, the thing is, it says he created the stars. Now, the thing is, he could On create the, the stars. Day, yes. Yeah, and he could have created the stars, and if we saw only 6,000 light years into space, then that would support what you're saying. Now, the fact that he's created, according to you, starlight that shows from a lot further out, going out to the point of being hundreds of, you know, it's going out to being tens of billions of years out, the fact that he's supposedly done that means that your God has lied to us by starlight for no good reason. There's no reason to do it. You and I must have a very different definition of what a lie is, because I don't don't see that as a lie. My idea of a lie is something that you do knowing it will mislead others. Well, hold on. Uh, I mean, I would say that, let me pull up a Bible verse. It does say that God will send strong delusion Ah, on those who will not believe the truth. Right, okay, so, so now... The people who, so why, how are you not just as likely to be sucked in by those delusions as anybody else? How, how can you know for sure that God isn't lying to you? How do you know for sure, for example... Because he's not... telling the truth when he... Okay, well, you want to know how do I know... Right, but... This is the whole, the whole, the whole idea of faith. The, I mean, when, when you hear the word faith, you, you probably hear that as a species of, uh, of illogic or, or something contrary to reason. No, 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 I'm a highly faithful person myself. I think faith is... Go on. Okay. I have a great deal of faith in humanity, for example, despite a great deal of evidence to suggest that faith is misplaced. Sure. Okay. Uh, Maybe that's just, uh, maybe you and I have a different, I I think faith, the word faith is exclusive, not that it's exclusive to Christianity. I just think when it's given in a Christian context, it means something different than, you know, my wife is faithful or I'm faithful to this or or your faith in humanity. It means you're placing trust in an absence of evidence, basically. Maybe in an atheist context, yes, not in a Christian um, context. In a country, because you have ultimately you have no proof of what you believe, that, so you have to relevant. believe on faith and faith okay, alone. Again, we're we're allowed to deal in hypotheticals. I, I'm sure you guys are co- kind of comfortable with that. So, if we grant the hypothetical that the Christian worldview is true and that human reason and human autonomy alone is not good enough to access ultimate reality, then what faith is is faith is our access. To ultimate reality, which is which is God, who is the truth, who is absolute reality, and He has told us everything we need to know regarding the nature of the world around us and our relationship to Him, so that we can know the truths that that we need to know. Or that's that's just, the nature of faith. Or you in, could just in a context, or let me finish. Yeah, or you can accept that the reality that you exist in is real. Uh, take your in, your experience of it from your senses and just get on with life. Now, okay, but you taking those two, taking those two different ways of looking at things, uh, my worldview, the worldview that real, reality is real and that my experience of it is give or take near enough to be, uh, to, to enable me to form a workable model of reality around me, uh, that is extremely successful. It has predictive power. It has enabled us to put man on the moon. It enables us to have conversations like this over the internet in real time sure. at great distance. The Christian worldview, on the other hand, has done nothing. It hasn't put anybody on the moon. Now, you're going to say, oh, but all these scientists of the past were Christians. They were, because everybody was a Christian. Now, as, the sci- as science has explained more and more, if your argument, you know, that I've heard from other creationists saying that, oh, but all these great men were creationists and Christians, if the evidence of science pointed to a God, you would think as science increased and it became more and more recognised, that you would think there'd be an increase in the amount of people who believe. Instead, there's the exact opposite. So... Which is not surprising at all, actually. Right. Okay, so why is that surprising? People are adopting... Here's why it's not surprising. You've adopted... Remember, I start with absolute reality as God. You start with human autonomy. No, I start with reality as reality. I don't start with human autonomy. I start with the fact that I believe that I can trust that reality is real. Okay, and I I, I start with that Okay, but on top of that, or under it, or or whatever, you are using your autonomy at some point. Mm -hmm. Just as everybody else is, just as you are, Sean. Okay, right, and then the five senses. Well, and anything and and anything that does not enter into your perception through either your reason or your five senses, you have excluded from the realm of possibility. No. No. I'm saying that anything that there's evidence for, I will look at. Now you have you're not. Unable what about? To th- hold on. Are you saying that there there that things? Excuse me. Are you saying that it is impossible for you to conceive of something that exists for which no evidence presents itself to your logic or senses? No, but I'll accept that thing as fantasy until some evidence of its existence is put forward. Uh, why are you so quick to 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 say it's fantasy though? That's that's what I what I what I'd like to know. 
I can imagine a city the size of London floating on a cloud. It doesn't right. mean it exists, but I can very clearly imagine it. I could do a painting of it. I could right. draw but a I'm picture of it. I'm asking you how you exclude it from the realm of possibility. Because, because I know for a fact that a city the size of London cannot float on a cloud because of its weight. Right. And so the way when I asked you earlier, works. that's fine, and I accept that. I accept that. Given the laws of nature, if they are uniform and functioning, they can't, they can't give you that, that thing you just described. However, when dealing with, obviously, we're talking about God, when you say that an eternal being is illogical based on what you've come to understand through your five senses and, and your reason, I have not been able to get a consistent answer from you. I've not, nothing intelligible has been said regarding that. Okay, well, maybe I should rephrase it. Maybe the word maybe, saying, maybe saying, 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 saying that it's illogical is maybe not the right way to put it. Saying that it's impossible is probably a better way to put it. Okay, and I'd like to, because by impossible you must mean reality is such that... Because reality would have to be changed to such a degree right. that it would no longer be recognizable as reality okay. if that what thing existed now. Change? And maybe this is how I should ask, what then would have to change in order for that for an eternal being to be... Causality, for one of them, that would have to change, because if he's outside of that, then... I mean, how does this being perceive time? If this being is outside of time, why, throughout the Bible, is he surprised, upset? Uh, why does he go looking for people? Why does right. he ask people questions when he already knows the answers? In this, well, in this version of reality, that, Sean, let me, let me finish. Point. In this version of reality, why does he send a worldwide flood if he knows it's not actually going to work? Well, it did work, but... But okay, it didn't. He, he said he wanted to wipe... He was so upset with the way mankind was, he wanted to wipe them all out and start again. And within within two chapters, everything's back to exactly how it was before. That's not why there was a worldwide flood, but okay. Well, why was there a, why, why was there a worldwide flood then, Sean? I can give a few answers. First was the, the Nephilim problem of Genesis 6. The Nephilim problem. So the Nephilim who were mentioned in one verse, saying also in the world at this time were the Nephilim, and it gives yes. no other information. Well, it says this of, of Noah's genealogy that he was pure. So there seems to suggest that Noah was spared for the fact that he wasn't contaminated by the goings on of the antediluvian period. But no, I think it means that he was actually pure of heart and a good man. It says no. It says he was pure in his genealogy. So it specifically Does it linked say to that. Purity. It says, it says yes. pure in his genealogy. Yes. Read me the verse. Pure in his generations. I've got a Bible right here. It says he was pure in his generations. Yes, Genesis 6. Okay, and what do you like think? Hitler. Hmm. I, I think this is, I mean, for, as, if you were a Christian and I was explaining this to you, this would, this would be fine. I think it's pointless to... I used to be a Christian. I, I don't think you were. Oh, I was. No true Scotsman again there. Were yeah. you, okay, let, then let me just ask you, were you, were you born again? No, I was a, uh, well, I, the, the, the sect that I was a member of wouldn't class itself as born again, but I was baptized as an adult, yes. That's not what I asked. Were you, did you receive the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> and how would you define the Holy Spirit, Sean? As the Bible describes it. What, is a dove flying down from the sky? No, but something changes in you. Something. I mean, when I became a Christian, June 28, 2006, one in the morning, I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me and enter into me, and literally I had <laughs> a... Yes, it's, it's, I'm telling you the truth. This was the experience I had. Right, okay. Now, so, unless... Now, hold on. It says clearly that those who receive Jesus Christ receive the Holy Spirit, and it says they are born of God. Read John 3.3, 3, where it says, unless you are born again and receive the Spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, unless, I, you, were, unless I, you were a genuine, Spirit-filled, born-again Christian, you were never a Christian. I genuinely According to the Bible. Sean, I genuinely believed that irrelevant. Jesus Christ was my Lord and Savior. Okay. That doesn't matter. Okay, if that's irrelevant. Right, okay, now, as you are... Jehovah's, as you, Witnesses, Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons will say the same thing. They're not Christians. As you are a self-proclaimed <laughs> uh, yeah. Christian, filled yeah. with the spirit of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ... Yes. How much money Can could you give to the Sick reality. Kids charity? Now, this reminds me very much... I'm glad you brought that up. This yes, I'm glad I brought it up, because we've, I've actually been holding off bringing that up, because these are questions that I've been wanting to ask from the beginning. Now, you, you solicited donations. Okay, could I, could I just... Could I, I'll, I'll answer you, but can I, can I just have a moment? Just an amount would be what I'd like to know. Just yeah, a sure. financial amount. Okay. Just an amount in dollars, Sean. Okay, here's my answer. It's... A little bit unfair to bring up something that Alex wrote online um, 
to make it seem as if he was having a, a personal attack at you. Well, let me answer that for you, side. Let me answer that, side. I think the very fact you brought that up proves the point that I initially made in the blog post. What's that? I think the fact that you will use that as a way to win your argument or to as a way no, no, to, it's not to win, win my argument. Let me finish. I'm not trying to win an argument at all. That on that issue. I'm saying. If you're using it, I mean, there's the only reason I can imagine you bringing that up in in a public forum like this and not bringing it up privately via email or something like that is in some way to try and belittle me. And I, and I think that's what you're doing. So I think you're both hidden. Oh, Sean, sure. that's not what I'm doing. Part of this uh, intention no, is to interview you, about you, the past now. Taking this conversation, Alex, can I just ask, ask Alex? Can I just ask Alex a question? Go on, go on, on Jim. Let me just on, ask guys. Alex something. Go on. Alex, how many times have you made YouTube videos asking people to, donate, to donate money to sick kids so that secretly you could use it to pay for books and your car? Uh, that would be no times, Jim. Right. Jim, Go can ahead, I ask Sean? you a question? Yeah. Jim, in, in the time that you've been online, how many times have you made videos uh, soliciting money to, uh, saying that you're going to give the money to charity and then using it for other purposes? Uh, none. Go ahead, Sean. Oh, interesting. Sean. And, and, well, I'd, I'd ask you guys this. First of all, I've never done that either. Second of all, is uh, it, so you're saying you didn't solicit um, on no, no, no. YouTube. I will grant you. Okay, let's say. Okay, let I've me put it another way, Sean. How many, how many false DMCA notices did you did you issue uh, against? Have, not only have I done that, I have killed many, many people, hypothetically. And okay. not only that, I I destroyed an entire country the other day. I'm actually a supervillain. I've done really bad things, guys. Can you no, tell me those, why that's wrong? Those things huh? aren't true. But the thing is that is true is the okay. fact that you solicited oh. payments uh -huh. and you then didn't give that money to charity. Can you tell uh, me why that's wrong? Because it's illegal for one thing, Sean. The only okay. thing that stopped um, you from it was, it was the only thing that's held you. Germany. It was illegal in Germany to be a Jewish person. I'm that's a Jew. That's irrelevant to the law Does in Canada mean, where you, Sean. That's irrelevant to the law in Canada where you are. You commit crime now. And the Nazis would have said the same thing. We were the only reason you didn't get in trouble it's with illegal. If the law deems something right or wrong, does that mean the government is always right? Well, the, the, the only reason you didn't get into a lot of trouble with the police, John, is because yeah. atheists who apparently are incapable of being moral are secretly looking out for you in the background and talking to your father to make nah. sure that you were protected from criminal prosecution for illegally soliciting charitable donations. And again, I'm trying to bring this conversation out of the muck and the mire and bring it back to the theological realm. Can you tell me exactly why you feel that, let's say I actually did kill people and all kinds of... Can you tell me why that's wrong? Okay, Sean, if going by your own, your own reasoning, yes. the Bible itself says that you must obey the laws of the land you live in, Absolutely. Because those, those rulers are put in place by God. And Absolutely. that if you disobey the laws of that land, you are disobeying God. It also you, says you should render unto Caesar what is Caesar, something yeah. which eluded Kent Hovind. You committed a crime in the country that you live in. And why and is that wrong? Because you're, I just told you, because by because your you own told standard, people you were going to give yes, money to a sick kid, and really you were using it to keep listen, up with your car payments. I fully admit How is that, that a Christian way to behave? If I've done anything wrong, I can make sense of that in my worldview. Oh, I want your Bible. Your worldview. Sure. Tell me in your worldview. Why are you guys accusing me? Tell me in your worldview why it's because wrong. Because I live in a world where yes. countries have laws. Yes. Right? Now, we are bound by those laws, whether we agree okay. with them or not. Okay. If you want so, to continue living in that country, you continue to be bound by the laws. Now, in your worldview, your God tells you to obey the laws of, of that country. Yes. You've, you've said that already, so, yes, so, so do you want to repeat yourself or do you want to make new grounds here? Can you tell you me why? Can you tell me, I understand what you're saying. Can you tell me why in an atheist worldview, why it would be wrong to disobey the laws of the country? Because you are living in a country that you agree to abide by the laws as part of the contract of living in that country. The okay, so why is it wrong to violate that contract? The agreement you make with the state... Yes. by living in that country and being a national of that country is that you will obey the laws of that country. If you don't obey the laws of that country, you should then expect to be punished for not obeying the laws of that country. Now, Sean, I asked you Kevin a question. What, no, no, don't change the topic. Why is that wrong? Why is it wrong to violate the contract? Because, because you're, you're made doing somebody else out of something by, by why dishonest is that wrong? means. Still, because you're, you're being dishonest why with people. Wrong? Why is it, being dis why why is it wrong to be dishonest? dishonest? Are you seriously asking us why it's wrong to be dishonest? I can make sense. I know that in, I I know that in Sean Van Impam Hecht's world, up, up, up is down and down is up, but seriously, I no, didn't no, no. even stoop to that. You're not answering the question. I can answer it. I can tell you why it's wrong, because according to God, it's wrong. Oh, gee, let me think. Is it in the Bible? Uh, come yeah. On. Sean, you, you know that it's wrong then, so after you had become but a... you, uh, I don't understand how you guys can say it's wrong. Because I follow the laws of the land in which I live, because I have made a contract with those... Okay, country but by why is it wrong to violate that contract? Because, because I've made an agreement not to. With people. 
Why is it wrong to violate your agreements? Because I have made an agreement not to. By abiding by the okay, concept so that I have made... it's wrong to violate an agreement because it's wrong to violate an agreement? No. no, it's wrong to violate an agreement because you're being dishonest with people. You wouldn't want it done to it you, to and so you shouldn't wrong. expect to be able to get away with doing it to other people. Okay, so I don't expect, but why is it wrong? Right, Sean, if you, you, can, Sean, you, if you can't answer that question yourself, then there really is no talking to you. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I can explain in my worldview. According to your worldview, you're now in a... I understand why you want to change the topic. No, 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 I think no, no, no. I'll, I'll stay on this topic all night if you yeah. want. I think I mean, this is quite interesting, Sean, because you're, you're trying to move things away and trying to ask us about uh, our worldview, etc. At no yeah. point have you shown any contrite behaviour, any sign of contrition that you actually did something wrong. You haven't said, yes, I did something wrong, I put my hands up to it. Whatever I contrition I have, I don't have towards you because you haven't even justified a, a, a way of making right and wrong even intelligible. You haven't you've told set me up, why it... You've set uh -huh. up a fraudulent charity and you solicited donations that you then did not forward to the sick kids' uh -huh. hospital. I okay, asked you a I question. I say I did much worse I've than that. I, I've actually murdered millions of people. No, you Why haven't. Is that that's wrong? actually not true. That's now, actually sure. not true. What but you did do was issue false okay, DMCA, DMCA exactly. takedown notices against uh -huh. people who pointed out that you were being a complete hypo hypocritical uh -huh. Christian fundamentalist, uh -huh. and then you tried to play the hurt feelings card by saying that you were being victimized by Muslim extremists, when actually it was you that had gone out of your way to victimize a Muslim in the street who thought he was being honestly interviewed about his opinion. Right, and so can you tell me why that's wrong, please? Now, Sean, I will tell you why that's wrong once you answer yes. my question that I've asked you several times now. Could you tell me, in dollars, how much you donated to the Sick Kids Charity? Could I tell you that? Yes. but if I, No, I'm asking you to. I'm asking you to tell me the amount in uh -huh. dollars, because if you have made a donation, I will say good on you. It will silence some of your critics. So I'm asking you to tell me, in a dollar amount, how much you donated from the money you were donated by uh, people on your YouTube channel, how much of that money you donated to the Sick Kids, the sick kids Charity? Well, as I explained in a video, and I've done multiple times, I've made it very clear that I wouldn't be donating to them, and I changed which charity I would be donating to. Right, so what charity did you then change? So, so to answer that question, you donated no money to the Sick Kids Charity. I have, do I so have donated money of my own money to the Sick Kids Hospital, but of the money donated to me, no, I donated to other charities. So which charities did you donate it to? Uh, I actually have the list, and I, I could find it, but I did it on video, so tell you what, I will send you the video where you can just watch me donate to various other charities. Okay, and did, did we you do this after you were told by your parents never to use the internet again for this no. purpose? No, this was well before then. So you did this before the police became involved? The police were never involved. Oh, I, so I'd, I'd heard that there was some, the authorities were involved, so I may be wrong. So there was a complaint made, but certainly it was wrong withdrawn. about that. Okay, no, well, in that case, I apologize. No, no need to apologize. Now, could you kindly answer the question? Let's say I had done much worse than anything you think I've ever done. Can you tell me why it's wrong to do as, anything? I'll tell you as, again if you want. Yeah, as I've said and as Jim said. Okay, you said I'm you just. Gonna, I I heard you. You said it's wrong to be dishonest, and you and it's wrong to and you keep using the word wrong, but you still haven't told me what makes something wrong. Because, because it deprives made. somebody else of something Why that they wouldn't have been deprived of if it hadn't been for else. your actions. You can interrupt me Why? all the live long day. No, but you haven't told me why that's wrong. Because you're depriving somebody of something they wouldn't otherwise be deprived of if it wasn't for your actions. You've intervened in a it? dishonest way. Okay, that's, that's actually a fine answer, but it doesn't tell me why it's wrong to deprive other people of, of what belongs to them. Because you wouldn't want it done to yourself. Okay, so you now you're actually you using, con you're using you. con categorical imperative that do to others as you would have done to yourself. Yeah, you haven't told me, you haven't told me why it's... It's a pre yeah. it's a pre Christian concept about the golden sure rule, and it's the basis of all law. You know the right. fact that you, haven't told, me, you haven't told me why it's wrong to violate that. Because you make a contract by being a citizen of the country you live in with that country, yes, and part right. of that contract is that you agree. Let's be honest, right. you don't have an answer for this one, do you? I'm giving you the answer. He's giving you it this, right now. This is not an answer, guys. I, okay, I'm I'm let me word it again. It is wrong. Because you have made an agreement by living in the country you live in, you have made a, an agreement with that country by being a citizen that you will not break the laws of that country. Why now, is breaking an agreement wrong? But if you have to ask that, Sean, there's no hope for you. No, but as a Christian, I understand it. As an atheist, can you give me the grounds for saying because anything Because I is have wrong? given my word no, no, no. As now a citizen you're of the country, I'm not an atheist. It's nothing to do with being an atheist. It's to do with it being a human being. 
Okay. It's not. Atheism is completely irrelevant. Atheism is the factual assertion that there is no evidence of any gods. It's nothing to do with an atheistic worldview. It's to do with being I'd a human, a sentient like creature, aware of the fact that other sentient creatures are also existing in the same plane of reality as we are. I do not want to deprive somebody of something because I wouldn't want to be deprived of it myself. Now, you can say that that doesn't account for the definition of why it's wrong to do something to Precisely. somebody else. Right? You can say it until you're blue in the face, but it isn't actually, you haven't actually offered me a valid reason to suggest that, 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 that my explanation is incorrect in some way. You're simply saying that as an atheistic worldview, it would make sense, but it's nothing to do with being an atheist, it's to do with being a human being. No, what it has to do with is you're just restating what you've told me. You're saying that it's wrong to, to do wrong because it's wrong. You haven't told me, I mean, that, that's really all you're saying. Sure, it has a negative, okay, if you want to go down to a, a more basic level. That's really what I want, If yes. it has a negative impact on the social group within which we live, then it is something that is not beneficial to do. So okay, that is where the origins me? of these morals come from. Okay, and uh, again, origins uh, I'm not necessarily concerned with. You haven't told me why it's wrong to negatively affect society. I just did a second ago. It just it just is. No, I just did a second oh, you ago. Just, okay, I you said just did. because it is not beneficial to the group. Right. So you're saying, be, it's, it can you're saying it's the wrong. Group that we live in. Uh, yeah. So it's wrong to damage social groups it negatively. that it negatively, negatively affects our chance of survival as a species. And it's wrong to negatively affect our our survival as a species because. Because we're driven to survive. That's that, this is selfish gene stuff. I mean. Okay, so it's wrong because a gene says so. It's wrong because we are, like all living things on this planet, kind of hardwired to want to survive and want to reproduce. And the fact that you should say that the gene says so, I mean, is, is, that's completely wrong as well. Genes aren't driven by anything. Genes don't observe moral I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. Uh, you, what you're saying is, is, is your, your view of morality is amoral, not immoral, amoral. Yeah, so Which you're means, saying without morals. It, it, it gives so you, you, I mean, you yes, that's precisely me. what I'm saying. You? Yeah. Yes. So we've got, to, we've, got, we've got from the point where, because we started talking about the fact that you illegally solicited charitable, charitable donations, all of a sudden we're the ones who are incapable of knowing the difference between right and wrong. I'm saying that you haven't given me a convincing argument to, to suggest that you guys even have a, a working morality, uh, moral framework. I, I, nothing you've said so far justifies saying that anything is or is not actually wrong. How many times have myself and Alex d solicited charitable donations online and then refused to hand them over? Uh, maybe you guys are the most morally upright people I've ever spoken to but from a Christian perspective. Be. You just said uh, that we, we didn't have any morals. You told us well, we were amoral a moment ago. In my worldview, maybe you're very moral, but in your worldview, all you are are uh, genes your trying to distorting. survive. Your microphone's Sorry. distorting. Am I clear now? All we, all we are is genes trying to survive. No, that's not the case. We're made up of so much more than that. We're conscious right. entities. Uh -huh. so, we're self-aware. Yes. We're more than just molecules in motion. We're, right. We're, and for some reason, you think that we, we are privileged by nature of being self-aware to, to have, uh, I, I guess, some sort of right to, to survival? No, there's nothing, no. We could be wiped out in a, in a second. We could, we, in fact, we're doing a pretty good job of trying to wipe ourselves out. And, and is that wrong? Uh, well, I want to survive, so you, from my point of view, it's wrong, yeah, but there's nothing inherent and to... Is, and is your, is your perception of, of right and wrong absolute? No. No, okay, so is it binding on, on everyone? Uh, well, within the constraints of the society that you happen to live in, then yes, it's binding on everyone. The, the rule of law... Is something that applies to people who want to live in a civilized society. And if you if you want to live in a, a non-civilized society, then the, the fast track towards achieving that is to is to encourage people to believe in things that aren't true. Yeah, I, I just I still don't see how you can say that. I mean, I, I've said this before. In order for something to be intelligible, there there are three criteria. And unless your understanding of morality is universally applicable, unchanging, and immaterial, you're left with this really sort of arbitrary statement. That can't can't be justified. It, it really can't be defended. Talking of do you, do you want to live in a world where people go around cracking each other's heads open and feasting on the goo inside? No. Is is what I want the absolute, unchanging, in, uh, immutable standard of morality? Uh, I'll take your silence as a no. 
Uh, my silence is based on the fact that like, what you just said was virtually incomprehensible. Language I think we're all familiar with. I want to, I want to read a statement to you, Sean. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, unfortunately, that, chap and, that charity happens to be right next to where I lived, so that revealed my location. That was you talking about yes. the Sick Kids charity. Now, is, is where you live, or where you were living at the time, was it the hospital and then a single house and no other properties in a very large radius around that property? Certainly not. Okay. So, you see, the thing is, I could say online, and I could say it now, that I live near the Shovel Inn in Lye in Stourbridge. Now, two things that people will not be able to get from that is my actual address and my phone number. Uh-huh. Now, th- because that could apply to any number of about 30 uh, or 40 if, properties. If I may interrupt, what... what, what <laughs> I, just, I, I don't understand. I mean, no, no, but uh, I'm just I, trying to clarify something. I'm just trying to clarify something you said. Go ahead. Uh, because you said that because you pointed out that you lived near this hospital next door to it, yes. that, uh, that people using that information could get your home address and phone number. Yes. Now, you then went on to blame Muslim extremists for the reason why you had to take your channel down, when in reality it was because you'd been told by your parents that if you didn't cease and desist, they would cut off your funding. And that was because Muslims had sent them death threats. Yeah. No, I don't think that had, Sean. I think you're lying. Yeah, I know you think that, but I've actually given a public interview with my parents online, which I can also send to you, where they said as much. So I really don't care if you think why I'm lying. What I am interested you, in is why do you think lying is wrong? Why do you continue to ask for, uh, for donations? Uh, you posted a video on September 28th asking for money to do whatever you want with that you claimed you would pay income tax on. Yes. Why do you continue to break the law? How am I breaking the law? By soliciting charitable donations without uh, being a registered charity. Or are you a registered charity? If you are, I'll happily apologise for that. Are you a 501c uh, registered charity? Religious no, but I, I certainly am allowed to receive gifts online through PayPal. Ah, so the gifts. And your parents are comfortable with that, given the history? Uh, yes. Do your parents know about the latest videos, Sean? Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes. Are you sure you're not going back on the word that you gave to the YouTube community that you would no, not listen, engage in this kind of activity? To you guys, and if you want a question, well, I think you are because you're a public no, figure, Sean, and you've said doing. things publicly many, many, many times that you've no, backed yourself into a corner with. Exactly what you accuse Sai of doing, which is trying to slander my character on your forum here. You're doing that for yourself, son. Do it. I don't. I don't care because I, I'm very comfortable with my legal standing. However, I find this indicative of what Romans three talks about, where it says, "If you accuse another, you condemn yourselves," because you're acknowledging moral absolutes and so you've acknowledged the law of God in so doing and, and have condemned yourselves. No, we've acknowledged the law of the land. <laughs> and is the law of the, the Sean, we're, we're not talking about the Bible, we're talking about a legal activity that could get you into a lot of trouble sure. that you've promised on previous occasions you wouldn't engage in any further and you still are. Uh-huh. You've just admitted to it. Okay, and that's fine. I, I, I'm totally comfortable with my legal standing, as I said, and I know that what I'm doing is perfectly fine. So if, if you feel otherwise, I'd still very much like to know why you feel so, uh, first of all, inclined. See, okay, look, w- fair enough. Look, no, here's the I'm thing. Finished. Can I get a word? You, you, you might think that um, we're doing this for other reasons, and you're welcome to think no, that, I but I actually genuinely feel quite sorry for you, because I think you're an intelligent lad who's motivated by things that you feel impassioned by. I think you've been steered down the wrong channel. I think I think you're barking up the wrong tree. You, for you've it. Still you're chewing more than you've bitten off. Absolute standard of right and wrong by which to judge which tree is, is See, a good you tree. Just, you just, all you can do is fall back on apologetics, and it doesn't really get you anywhere, as, as, we've, as we've attempted to engage with you on that level for the past hour and a half. Well, tell you what. Why don't we do a summary of, of everything we've talked about so far and then decide if we should continue the conversation? Would that be okay? Oh, well, we've come up to the two-hour mark anyway, so... Yeah. I think we're, we're reaching the point where we need to really draw things to a close. Okay, so, well, I want to say anything? this in, in closing, then. Go on, then, Sean. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind you guys questioning uh, my behavior. I, I've admitted to not always doing things right. And that, as a Christian, I can understand that, because I do have an absolute unchanging standard. Now, you, on the other hand, believe that everything is material, everything is uh, temporal, and everything is subject to change. So... Even your moral amazing, standards, isn't it? I even your it. logical I, I standards are way. subject to change. And so I don't understand why you're so committed to these unchanging, essentially contingent and, and disappearing truths. Why, okay. why get all riled up about them? 
Yes. We don't understand why we would want to be open-minded, and we don't understand why you would want to be closed-minded. You guys are anything but open. open. You guys are, are the very opposite of open-minded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, despite what you just said, Sean, yet the fact you know that you posit yourself as the, the, the Christian believer and that we're the, the people who have no grounding for morals, uh, yet, as we've seen, uh, we're not the ones that have broken the law. So, hmm. What do we make of that, I wonder? I guess we'll have to leave that for the listeners. And repeatedly break the law, despite well, the fact that we've promised not to. Only the Christian has the basis for saying that breaking the law is wrong. So regardless of what I've done, that's, the that's, fact that's, of the matter is the atheist that's, that's has no basis saying for saying, saying I'm allowed to do whatever wrong. I want to do because it says that I can in the Bible, and that's not a moral stance. That's well, using yeah, the Bible as an excuse to behave like a, a miscreant. And I don't no, think you I, are a miscreant. I think that you've fallen into the wrong trap. I'm more than incapable willing to of taking a stand back to look at what you've actually done. You think that you have justification for doing things that are actually abhorrent to most people. You, Again, you, you, and you're walking a very fine line. You're going to find yourself as you get older, you're going to realize that you've done things which you're not exactly going to be proud of. And you're going to find it increasingly difficult the older you get to back away from them. You're going to become entrenched. You're going to find yourself in a position where you've got no choice but to be a religious extremist because that's what people expect of you. I'm offering you a choice. I'm offering you the ability to say, look, Maybe I got things wrong at first, and yeah, Ken Hovind is in prison because he's a liar. Hey, we all make mistakes. There's nothing wrong with being intellectually honest, John. You don't have to back yourself into a corner all the time and say, I'm right because I'm right. It just makes no, you look right close-minded. Right. And I think you're actually an intelligent lad, but you, you, you're setting yourself up for a fall. When you put people, when you put yourself on a pedestal like that, you should expect to get... I'm not on to a get pedestal. But you clearly are, though, Sean, because you're saying that we can't account for morality at the same time as being you, a completely immoral person when it comes to All you can aspects. say is that what's wrong is wrong because it's wrong. That's not that no, really... No, you can say that, Sean. That isn't, that's exactly the opposite of what we said. I don't know why you didn't hear what we said. I mean, we explained various things from it being a, a contract with the nation that you live in to its uh, you origins in... Wrong. Yes, what, we did. We explained okay. that its basis is in uh, living in social groups. We've explained why okay, it's wrong, right. because it's, it doesn't benefit the survival of the group. Now, that, that basically... Make something wrong is, I suppose, what I'm trying to point out. I mean, we're dealing with something called meta-ethics. We're trying to actually just define what the word wrong means. And you've defined it as being detrimental to social groups or, or somehow being detrimental to the survival of the species. And I'm accusing you of being completely arbitrary, because how do I know that the extinction of the species isn't, isn't actually uh, morally better than the alternative? You, it, it may well be. It may well be. We've, ne- we've never said anything different. It may well be. Oh, well, then if it may well be, then you certainly don't know right from wrong. I would prefer it if we weren't about to be wiped out by you know, an imminent meteorite well, or whatever. But determine right and wrong. Do you determine right and wrong? Well, the, the meteorite doesn't determine between right and wrong. The meteorite just behaves in the way that it behaves, and it's an inexorable path towards the planet. I can't say that it's right or wrong for the, for the asteroid to do that, because it's an undriven force. I agree with that. So in order to say that, objectively speaking, that the survival of the human species is, uh, is better than its extinction then humanity as a whole must have an objective value, which must yeah, be... Yeah, we, will, we would prefer to survive, but clearly... If it comes from us, then it's not absolute. It's not objective. It's subjective. Religion is a subjective choice. It's not a moral imperative. Uh, okay, I'll agree with that. Okay. Right, well, it seems to me that that seems to be a... Uh, an appropriate moment to end, Sean. I appreciate you coming on. I'm very grateful for you to appearing, for you to appear, and uh, I'm grateful that you've stuck with us and have given us honest answers. So, you know, I don't. Well, want look, to guys, that I've, I've actually enjoyed the conversation. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sorry that it, it took the turn that it did, but uh, I'm actually pleased with, with the overall conversation because I think what it does is it shows that. The atheist worldview, uh, you make certain claims, whether they be logical, moral, or whatever, but they, they actually only fit within the Christian framework. They, they don't work. Uh, your, your commitment to moral absolute, absolute specifically uh, is confounding to me, absolutely yeah. confounding. So I'll, and, I'll just and, thank you guys and, and say, say good night. And I was going to say something in your defense earlier on that got, that got glossed over, but since you brought it back up again, I would also agree that the laws of the land that we say that we adhere to are derived from a certain kind of Christian framework, a certain kind of Christian teaching, a biblical origin, if you like. But I would also say that we've moved on from that now. Okay, I think that's a fair enough point to, to draw things to a close. Uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's at Fundy Flawed. That's F-U-N-D-I-E-F-L-A-W-E-D. Uh, you can comment once the podcast is up on live on the site at fundamentally-flawed.com. Uh, our Skype address is Fundy Flawed. Again, same spelling as the Twitter one. And uh, Jim, what's the email address? 
uh, fundamentallyflawedpodcast at gmail.com, you know, just to keep it nice and short and snappy and simple. That's one I can never remember. So, uh, Sean, as is always the tradition with Fundamentally Flawed, we finish each show with a group goodbye where we all just say goodbye and then it fades to black. So I appreciate you being on. Uh, thank you, everybody who's listened. It's been another long one. And uh, all I can say is thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.